In this video, I will tell you the five most common interview questions for asset management and how to answer them. If you watch my videos, you already know that I moved to London six years ago to work in asset management and I did 19 interviews before I received my first job offer. Of these 19 interviews, five were at the same company and I didn't even get the job. So I do know the pain of getting rejected and with this video, I want to increase your chances of getting hired. So without further ado, let's start with question number one, which is why do you want to work in asset management? It's okay to say that you're attracted by the prestige of this career, but I wouldn't get more materialistic than that. Just because long-term money alone cannot be a sustainable motivation. A better answer to this question would focus on the fact that unlike investment banking in which you advise clients, in asset management, clients trust you to take decisions firsthand. So you have full responsibility for managing their investments according to their long-term goals. You get to work on difficult but interesting problems every day. And because markets move all the time, your job is never boring because there's always a new challenge to solve. Also, the people you will work with, you will find that they're very motivated, very ambitious. So it's a great environment for growth, especially as a young person. Question number two is what you think this business does? To answer this question, obviously, we must know that asset management is the management of investments on behalf of third parties. But depending on where exactly you are interviewing, they might do slightly different things. So the first thing you should know is who are the clients? Are they institutional clients or are they private clients? Do they invest in assets directly? So they do property and infrastructure or do they create portfolios of stocks and bonds? If they are equity investors, do they have a value bias or a growth bias? All these things usually can be found on the company's website, but if you have doubts and you want my help in understanding what they exactly do, feel free to leave me a comment below. Question number three is how do you value an asset? An asset is a resource that has economic value. And what an analyst does in asset management is trying to understand and calculate this intrinsic value. There are three main methods. You don't have to know them inside out for the purposes of the interview, but it's good to have a general understanding. The first one is the discounted cash flow method. This is by far the most common, can be used for stocks, for bonds, for property, for any asset really that generates cash flow. And the idea is that we take these future economic benefits and we discount them or we bring them back to the present to know how much they are worth today. I've already done a video tutorial on how to build your own discounted cash flow model using Nike as an example. I will leave a card to that video and I will also put the link in the description box. The second method is comparable company analysis, also called trading multiple analysis and is a relative valuation method. So we start with a small company and we look at the competition. If there is enough similarity in terms of business model, corporate structure and profitability, the analysts will look at the competitors trading multiples to assess the value of the company of interest. The last method is past transactions. This is also a relative valuation method because analysts look at prior acquisitions and the discounts or premiums of which assets or businesses have been bought in the market. Question number four is tell me about different asset classes. Asset classes are really just groups of securities which are similar in a fundamental way. There are four main asset classes, cash, easy, stocks, also called equities, bonds, which are fixed income instruments. And then the last one is alternative investments, which is the broadest category and includes property, private equity, commodities, hedge funds, derivatives, etc. The most important thing to remember here is the difference between stocks and bonds. Stocks give you shares of ownership in a company and also a share of the profits that come to you as dividend payments. Not all companies pay dividends and actually they can stop paying them whenever they want. Bonds, on the other hand, give you a share of ownership of the debt capital of the company. So if you buy bonds, you're not an investor in the company, you are a creditor. Bonds don't give you dividends, they give you interest payments as coupons. These are regular and are contracted. And because they are safer than dividend payments, as you can imagine, they're also lower because there is no free lunch. Alternative investments is really a very broad definition. I have done videos on hedge funds and derivatives like futures and forwards. I will link those below if you want to watch them. Question number five is, do you follow financial markets? What can you tell me about it? To answer this question today, you could talk about general popular themes like the rise of SPACs or inflation, or you could talk about specific news on a company that you follow. Obviously, if you add your own views and thoughts, that will get you extra points. How to stay up with financial news? 
Well, obviously, you could read the Financial Times, Bloomberg News, The Economist, etc. Personally, when I was a student, I was struggling with this. There was a lot of jargon and couldn't get my head around it. Also, English is not my first language. If you're like me and like something simpler to understand, I can recommend Finimize, which is a financial newsletter that gets delivered into your inbox. They have financial news explained simply. They have a seven day free trial. Afterwards, it's a paid service. But if you go to the website, you will also find a lot of free resources sources, past newsletters, etc. If you know of other popular interview questions that I didn't discuss in this video, feel free to leave me a comment and I will discuss them in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.